In this video, I tried to get as far as I could in Sneaky Sasquatch while three rules were applied. If I lose all my hunger, if I pass out for any reason, or if I get caught by the ranger even one time, I lose and the video ends. Can I make it 100 days in this hardcore version of Sneaky Sasquatch? We're about to find out. If you end up enjoying this video, consider subscribing as this video took a long time to make. Now let's get started on day one. The tutorial is not skippable, but I checked and it says day zero. So after stealing some food and learning the functions of the game, I slept and I woke up to the real challenge. Day one, I hurried to get the quick travel map, as well as a secret cache, and then I dodged the ranger for the first time of many. I proceeded to use the coins I had gotten to call the free money hotline. I made a video on the free money hotline, it's linked in the description of this video. I also did my mischief with the fox for the first time. I teleported home using the map and bought almost all the items in the shop because they will all be useful for earning coins back. You can also unlock the ability to get custom outfits if you buy all the items. After leaving the shop, I used the fishing rod to get fish and feed it to a bear in exchange for the first map piece. I then ran up to the RV park, and with a few shenanigans, I was able to help the duck get her hat back and get myself yet another map piece. I, was, I also raided everyone's RVs because I do not want my hunger to drop. Remember, if that goes to zero, I end the video. Anyway, I managed to paddle across the lake to the maze, and there I got a third map piece as well as another secret cache. It was getting late, and without a watch, I had no idea what time it was, so I teleported home ate dinner, and slept. Day two, I woke up and I watched the cutscene and learned that those map pieces I got were going to be very useful in helping to save the park. I then bought the flashlight and went over to explore the cave, but on the way over there I was writing my notes and I was chased by a ranger. Don't worry, I, I got out of the area and the ranger didn't catch me, but that could have been bad. I was able to explore the cave, but before I could get the map piece, my hunger dropped. Yeah, I know I would have been fine, but I didn't want to risk it. You may notice I have been fishing here and there, and that is because today I went to the old fisherman and started my quest for all the freshwater fish. I got a decent amount of coins for the ones I already caught, but there's still plenty to go. The only other thing I did was open the back entrance to my cabin, and then I ate and slept. I woke up on day three and I purchased the last item in the raccoon shop, skis. And this meant, yes, I was going to go to the ski resort, but not before I caught a bunch of fish, including the talking fish. I took the shuttle to the ski resort, and after learning how to ski, I easily stole the map piece from the skier. I couldn't get the pro skis yet, but that was my goal for day four. Hey look at that, it's day four, and after eating my stolen breakfast, I happily took first place in every amateur contest. But then my phone didn't save the next few days. For the next few days, I will summarize what happened in one word or phrase. Failure. Cave snowfish. Christmas miracle. I passed my licenses. I completed the map. Day 10. I had saved the park, and unfortunately this happened without me knowing it wouldn't be saved, but I fixed the issue for the most part, and my settings book will show that I actually did not get caught by the ranger. I didn't really do anything significant on day 10. The cutscene showed me that I had to stop Mr. Pemberton for a second time, and to do it, I had to work for him until I could get my hands on his illegal document. Day 11, I went to the store, but unlike how I usually do things, I did not steal and rather paid for everything. I did not want to get arrested and have my video end here. I then spent the rest of the day at the arcade, winning the watch, which would be useful for stopping Mr. Pemberton. Then I teleported home and slept. Oh yeah, I also got the junior work disguise, but for some reason I didn't write that down in my notes. Anyway, I slept and I woke up on day 12. Day 12. Today I went to the bank and got an account. This is an essential step to being hired, and I decided my name for this playthrough would be L, in honor of Stranger Things Season 4 that will seemingly never come out. I went to the open interview and got the job immediately, and I made my name official. Because work didn't start until the next day, I decided I would also join the photography club and start working at the newspaper, but I didn't have enough money for the camera, and after I got enough coins through racing, I learned I couldn't get the newspaper job until I was at photographer level 3. It was getting late, but one of the photo requests was the map board at my house, so I took a picture of it before going to bed. 
Day 13. I headed straight to work and my first task was to deliver mail to my coworkers. I messed up the names of people a few times, but I got through it and by the end of the day I was halfway through my first level at R Corp. What does R Corp mean? Well, I made a video on that too, and it's going to be linked in the description for you to watch later. After work, I got almost all my photos for the first level of the photography club, which took me from the racetrack to the golf course and back home where I slept. Day 14. I knew I could get that first promotion today, so I hurried to finish my work as fast as I could. As soon as I finished delivering my last piece of mail, I went to my manager, who said I was now promoted to personal servant. Why didn't I quit? Anyway, I strategically got everyone's orders at once, and this allowed me to save time and get halfway to my next promotion before the end of the day. I hadn't quite finished my first photo club assignment, so I headed to the ski resort after work and got my next picture. I then earned coins from skiing, then I drove home and slept. Day 15. I decided that if I wanted to be the most efficient, I would start from the top floor down asking people what I should get them. I ended up only having two orders, so this method didn't really save that much time, and I didn't quite get the promotion, but now I'm guaranteed to have it in the bag tomorrow. Mostly because I'm competing for the spot against NPCs, but either way. I went to the photography club and became level 2. This gave me the tripod, so I can now take time photos. I immediately got started on those requests because I am a simp for purple haired women, and after completing them, I went to bed. Ah, day 16. When I woke up, I started the day off by being AFK for a solid 2 minutes. I must have been writing notes. But you'll be happy to learn I got to level 3 photographer and got another promotion. So now all I have to do is answer the phone and, and occasionally solve tech issues. Did I mention I also got that newspaper job? I also made my dumbest mistake yet, and I am so, 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 so lucky I did not get caught. Let me just show you what happened. Yeah, I went brain dead for a second and ran back inside to pick up my disguise. I've played this game for over a year now. Day 17. I had almost gotten every photo for the next level of the photography club, but I needed to get a picture of a barbecue. Now I thought this picture would work, but apparently the two times I had taken a picture like that, it had gone towards a man with glasses and a pile of logs. So I spent my morning looking for a real barbecue. I got my next newspaper assignment and I wanted to buy the corporate outfit because I would need it for my next promotion, but I wasn't paying attention and I accidentally bought the cool disguise. After a long day's work, I went to bed. Day 18, I woke up eager to finish my photo club requests and I was actually able to do so very quickly. I then went back to work and I got to the point of almost getting another promotion. It doesn't really matter because I don't have the right outfit to get the next promotion, so after cashing in my photo to my second job, I withdrew some of my coins and I bought the outfit. Day 19, I had only one goal in mind, get that promotion. So after a quick stop by the newspaper, I got to work and before long, I was talking with my boss about it. After getting the promotion, I wanted to check my office computer to see if I had anything I could do, and as it turned out, I could go golfing with Mr. Pemberton. I won, although he accused me of cheating, so that's probably not a good sign. I then approved some paperwork, but this job is cake, I barely do anything, it's perfect. Day 20, for some reason I checked my status on day 20, and as you can see, I have honestly never been caught. And then I ran into an elderly man, and had to flee the scene before I was caught. And then I almost hit him again. I was just trying to get more photo film, but I couldn't afford it. So I spent my day at work, waiting to annihilate Mr. Pemberton in golf yet again. Nothing else really happened, just office work. Day 21, I golfed. That's my life now. All I do, waiting, more golf. I lost this time. I also got paid to sleep through a meeting. This is the hardest part of the storyline because you can't get promoted. It's just a long grind. After work, I blew all my money on film because I was running low. 
and then I went home and slept. Day 22. I tried racing, but I realized I needed to upgrade my supercar. So I did the mountain pass, and then after upgrading it, I lapped the other cars. My goal for this video is to have every car and complete the Sasquatch 100. Day 23. I tried to complete my photo club request, and this caused me to drive all over, but I wasn't able to complete all of it. Day 24. I wanted to find a sleeping camper to help me complete my photo request, but instead, all I could do was catch more fish and sell them to the fishermen. I thought I could rig the system and get the sleeping camper photo if I set up my tripod to take a photo of myself, but this didn't work. Because my plan didn't work, I woke up on day 25. I wanted to do something special for day 25, so I decided to try and get the pickup truck as well as a large stack of lumber. This would allow me to upgrade my home. I was able to earn a lot of coins for one day, but by the end of it, I could only afford the truck. So it wasn't a total loss, but I was a little disappointed. Either way, after filling up my hunger, I went to bed. I woke up on day 26, determined to get the coins needed to buy the wood for my first house upgrade. And when I got to the racetrack, I was met by a new duck, the valet duck. After agreeing to let him be my valet, I started earning coins. At the end of the day, I didn't have quite enough coins though, and I took my rage out on a civilian. Day 27. I immediately went to finish getting the coins for the wood, but after I arrived at the sawmill, I was told I had taken the wrong pickup truck. Since I couldn't get wood, I decided to try and get the sawmill disguise inside the back room. This went horribly wrong. After my narrow escape, I decided I would simply try again the next day, so I teleported home. Day 28. I did a few more races so I could upgrade my truck, and then a few more so I could buy the wood. I changed the color of my truck so I could tell it apart from some others. Then I bought the wood. When I got home, I realized I still needed a second, small stack of lumber. So day 29, I'm back at the racetrack doing the pro circuit. Yeah, I barely won. After getting enough coins, I bought the wood and because my hunger was low, I went to the ski resort and ate before teleporting home. Day 30, I dropped the supplies off at the ducks and had them get to work. A few moments later, they had completed the renovation and I was on my way to the office. I had no golf today, so I delivered mail until it was time to sign paperwork. I repeated this twice before I headed home. Day 31, I went to work and I realized I once again only had meetings and paperwork. So I went AFK in the conference room until the meeting started, and I heard of the company going bankrupt. I tried bringing this to my boss, but he didn't want to discuss it. I went for a coffee run and hit somebody, but luckily I was able to hide. After signing the paperwork, I went home. Day 32. I knew this would be my last day with Mr. Pemberton, so I was happy to learn that we go golfing with him. I had to spend most of the day dealing with my coworkers who can't figure out that they need to plug their computer in for it to work. I wanted to commemorate my last moments golfing with Mr. Pemberton, so I made this montage. I had to come back at night in order to steal his illegal plants and turn him over to the police. So on the way, I got a photo for the photo club and had one final meal before putting him in jail. I broke in and all I had to do was unlock the door using a golf ball and unlock the safe using a recovery disc. Then we went to the police and when Mr. Pemberton asked me if I was involved, I decided that I would say yes because in this playthrough, I would show no mercy towards my enemies. Then the credits rolled and I woke up. On day 33, I learned that somebody had polluted the lake and I needed to join the police force in order to help solve this mystery. But I also knew that I would need the scuba gear eventually. So I went over to the racetrack and I did the dreaded Sasquatch 100 so I could get 5,000 coins for that scuba gear. 
So while I'm driving around in circles for 22 minutes, I would like to point you guys towards the shiny red subscribe button. If you click that and allow notifications, you can see whenever I post a video. So assuming I do make it 100 days, you can see if I make it to 200 days. With all that being said, you can always unsubscribe later if you end up not liking my content. Now let's get back to the video. Day 34. After the Sasquatch 100, I still needed a few more coins because it cost 100 to travel to the island where you get the scuba gear. So I did the mountain pass twice to be sure, then I knew I was ready. First though, I decided to actually get hired by the police. So I headed to the station and got the job immediately. After heading to the island, I got my boating license just because. Then I bought the scuba gear. I knew exactly what to do. Scuba dive for trash, then sell it to upgrade my gear. Day 35 to 38, all I did was scuba dive. At the ocean, at my house, at the marina. There were a few close encounters with passing out, but I was always able to make it to shore. You can tell I'm in shock after I almost lose this challenge because I sit AFK for a solid 30 seconds trying to process what happened. Along the way, I was able to buy the boat because I never use bank money. Then I got almost every upgrade and I bought the beach disguise and the surfboard. Day 39. It was finally time to start my police work. This is another job where you do the same task repeatedly, but personally, I enjoy being a corrupt cop. I was so good at it, I even managed to get a promotion. This first level is writing tickets for not having a valid license or insurance. The second level is speeding tickets. Day 40. I woke up ready to ruin people's days, and I almost got the promotion, but it was late. I was tired. I figured it could wait. Day 41. The first thing I did was get the promotion, and for this last level, all you need to do is search the hoods of cars for cargo, in other words, groceries. I didn't complete this one in one day though. Day 42. I completed my last level of police work, and I became a detective. This meant my task was now to solve the mystery of the lake. I had already gotten the scuba gear, so my next step was to take a picture of the sewage pipe in the lake that was being polluted. I got the photo, but time passed really fast in the game, and I had to sleep. Day 43. I turned in the photo, and in exchange, I got the Pasco to the pump room. So I headed straight to the sewers, where I fixed a pathway, but then I had to leave to get my hunger back up. I came to the sewers, and after getting lost for what felt like forever, I finally found the pump room. I learned if I came back at 7, I could catch the goons in the act of polluting the lake. I thought maybe I had to tell my fellow officers, but I couldn't. So I went back to the sewers at 7, and from there I was able to use the scuba gear to get to the storage room and stop them. I showed no mercy. They are going to jail. Day 44. After the shocking plot twist at the end of the storyline, I'm sure I'll have to put Mr. Pemberton away again. But for now, I decided to get the taxi permit. On the way over, I considered shoplifting for the first time, but I really didn't want to get caught and I ended up paying. I also hit two pedestrians. Don't worry though, they were only a little scared. Day 45. I just did some photography, and by the end of the day, I had turned in my newspaper assignment and leveled up to level 5 photographer. Day 46. After getting more film and turning in my photo, I headed to the racetrack to get my taxi license. I then tried to finish my level 5 photography, but I didn't know what a jerry can was, and I couldn't find a golfer with a mustache. I did hit a golfer though and I found another secret cache. I also got the hardest photo yet, a Sasquatch sneaking by a camper. I did this while I was near an exit and behind a person, so I didn't get caught. Day 47, I got more pictures, I bought beef jerky, and I turned in my photo to the newspaper. Day 48, I tried getting more photos, but I didn't know where some of this stuff was. So after searching in the wrong spot for the fishing sign, I decided to head home and call it a day. Day 49, I bought beef jerky, got another photo assignment, and took a picture of my boss for the photo club. I then prepared for day 50 by heading to the ski resort and sleeping at the lodge. Day 50, as you can see, I'm giving this man a taxi ride. My goal for today was to give as many people a taxi ride as possible, and then earn the taxi cab, which lets you have up to three or four passengers. This happens when you have a long-term rating of four or more stars. I tried getting it after about 4 rides, but the man selling the cab said I needed to do more. The problem is that I used the supercar, which goes way too fast. By the end of the day, I had a solid 3.0, like my GPA. 
but I'm sure I can get that up within the next 50 days. Day 51. I gave as many people a taxi ride as I could, and when it got late, I decided to get some photos. I got a floating dock in the rain, the fisherman's sign, and a man with a hard hat at night. Because it was late, I slept at the ski lodge. Day 52. After eating, I got the photo of a Sasquatch sitting, which was risky, but I figured I could change my outfits before the rangers came. I was able to get the sawmill disguise, but I didn't know if that meant they could recognize me, so I TP'd home. I proceeded to give taxi rides using the police car. I thought I could hit things without them caring, but that plan failed. I went back to the sawmill and was able to find the key to unlock the cabinet, and find one of the most rare items in the game, sushi. I raided the sawmill's fridge and then headed home and built a cooler for important items, such as sushi, jerky, and s'mores. Day 53. I filled the cooler, then I tried to get a 4 star rating, but only got it up to 3.9. I went to the golf course and fished a little, and I got a picture of a golfer with a mustache. Then I went home and slept. Day 54. I woke up and the first thing I did was taxi people around until I got a long term rating of 4.2 stars. Before I got the taxi cab though, I bought film and leveled up to level 6 photographer. I then bought jerky, turned in my newspaper assignment, and finally got the cab. Then I teleported home and slept. Day 55. I stored the jerky I bought, turned in my fish, and I got my hardest photo yet. I had to scare someone and take a picture of them. I was only able to do this because I was at the lake and I had already unlocked the scuba gear. So the second I scared them, I swam underwater. I ended up at the ski lodge by the end of the day, trying to catch one or two fish so I could get my first gift from the fisherman. Day 56. After eating breakfast, I went to turn in my fish and I got the pro fishing rod so I can catch the larger fish. I went to the golf course and got a picture, then I decided to do the pro golf contest. I didn't record the whole thing because I'm doing this on my phone and I need storage, but it doesn't matter because I got third place. Day 57. I headed to the racetrack and after testing my different cars' drifts, I settled on using the truck for the drift competitions. I managed to take first in the amateur contest, but I only got second at best in the pros. Day 58. I decided to steal a motorcycle and do my taxi rides on that. I cannot tell you how much I love the motorcycle. It's fast, but it's also small enough to avoid most cars. That being said, I got reckless and the video almost ended. I made my way to the ski resort where I tried to get the secret cash from the winter racetrack, but it got dark out and I had to head home. Because I got home around midnight, I decided to try and catch some fish in the lake, and after getting one, I teleported home for fear of passing out. Day 59. I tried catching the sturgeon, but there were none in the usual area, so I went to the lake and because it was raining, I got several other fish that I then turned into the fishermen. I tried doing more pro drift races, but it only made it to second. Then I got the carp, went home, and slept. Day 60. I got up, ate breakfast, and drove my red truck to the fisherman. I knew I could get my next gift. After getting his picture of Galfi the fish, I headed to the river so I could catch the sturgeon. I caught a few other fish so I'd have some to eat. Then I headed out. But wait. I decided I would use the truck, since that's faster than walking, right? This was my last mistake. So technically, because I closed the game, it didn't count as me being caught. But ever since the beginning, I had the rule that if I was going to be caught, I would not close the game. Because I would be able to get away with a lot more if I was able to close the game every time I was close to getting caught. But I'll let you decide though. Comment below whether or not I should finish the 100 days. I just want to say thank you so much for making it this far, and if you did enjoy, consider subscribing, it's free, you can always change your mind, and we're so close to 200 subs. I appreciate and love all of you guys, and have a great day.